If you've ever played Sea of Thieves before, chances are you are familiar with the ebb and flow of the game. PvPers need other people to complete PvE content so that they can steal the treasure in order to make money. But what if I told you that all of that changed today? Welcome to Season 8 of Sea of Thieves. Otherwise known as the PvP Season, this particular content update introduced a brand new PvP only way to make money without you ever needing to touch a piece of treasure again. As long as you have the skill to back up your ambitions, if you know me, you also know that I'm I'm not exactly what somebody would consider a PvP god, so can an average player still make loads of money this season even when our PvP skills are lacking? Yes, and I'm here to show you how. Done are the days of grinding out world events to make money, join me as I fill my pockets to the brim in this brand new season. But before said filling of pockets could commence, we needed to prepare. Part of this update is the introduction of two opposing PvP factions, and with me taking the side of the Servants of the Flame, I figured the best way to win some battles was by teaming up with others who have the same goal. We are going to crush the Guardians of Fortune under our boot together and with a rank 5 Reaper Emissary just around the corner, I figured that my first ally was but a stone throw away. Before this update, Reaper Emissaries would just fight anyone they can see, including other Reaper Emissaries, but now that we have a common enemy, hopefully collaborations are going to become more of a common occurrence. Though I could immediately tell that something was off, rather than welcoming my arrival, the other sloop decided to drop their Reaper 5 Emissary flag and began running away. That's a bit odd, so I called out as much when I found the captain of that vessel swimming towards my ship, and things began making a lot of sense once I got to take a look at the guy. Now listen, raising the flag of the Reapers while clearly being on the side of the Guardians of Fortune is reason enough for me to attack this ship on the spot. But because it was the first day of a new season, I felt like I had to explain why I was about to murder him. I've noticed you guys have the, the hourglass up. Do you, you know that means PvP, right? Yo, what about this? Hey, we, we're gonna practice some PvP, alright? You and I. Let's go. Right, I should probably also explain what all that means. So the headline feature of Season 8 is the ability to queue up for on-demand PvP with a new hourglass you can find on your ship. Once you decide to do so, your vessel begins glowing in the color of your faction of choice and you are ready to be invaded by a player of the opposing faction at any point in time. You can also be the one doing the invading, but we'll get to that later. Basically, I was doing him a favor because if I didn't sink him now while he had nothing on board, chances are he would have collected a bunch of loot just to lose it once another Reaper spawned on him. So this encounter did show me that pirates who are not actively and purposefully participating in the matchmate PvP system aren't exactly up for sparring. Hello! Do you wish to have consensual PvP? Hey, what's up? Do you have a microphone? Can you hear me? My ship's gonna ram the rock. Do you want a PvP? Okay. Oh. I mean, have a, have a nice day. See ya. It became obvious that I was not gonna find anyone either willing to fight against or alongside me, which doesn't mean that I gave up. I kept going around outposts as well as fortresses to begin supplying up for the battles ahead, and after a little while, I did find somebody who could fulfill my request. Oh my goodness gracious! What on God's green earth am I looking at? What I was looking at was a champion vessel. The icon above the ship meant that they had successfully won no less than four PvP battles in a row, and with a Reaper 5 emissary flag as well as a Reaper's bounty to boot, it appeared as though these guys had some treasure as well. I immediately made my way towards them, finally a ship on the server that undeniably engaged in PvP. I was either gonna get a good fight or a very strong ally, though by the time I arrived at the location, they were gone. They matched made into another fight on a different server and because you can't take any of the loot with you when you do that, I got to pick up the scraps. Not only did I just get to level up my emissary flag to rank 5 absolutely for free, but the treasure they left behind also allowed me to pocket a sweet 100,000 gold without even firing my cannons. Well, besides the skelly fleet I had to sail past. Speaking of skeletons, why should we engage in PvP in the first place? Well, I think you know the answer, for reasons that go back as far as time itself new cosmetics. Reaching allegiance level 100 with the Servants of the Flame would grant me access to the Skeleton Curse, allowing me to shed this puny costume that I spent 10 real life dollars on, and instead, become a Skeleton Lord in earnest. And because every victorious encounter increases the value of your hourglass, there's not only just a curse, but also a lot of money in it as well. I mean, 100,000 gold without fighting anybody was nice, but I wonder how much more I could make if I go on the hunt myself. So I queued up for a match and began my descent towards the bottom of the ocean, and what awaited me once I emerged was a fight unlike any I have ever had. There's our opponent, let's go. 
It was a fight to the death, an honorable 1v1 in a confined space that we weren't allowed to leave until we had sunk our opponent. I definitely did not start off strong because that guy took down my master in no time flat. There were no safety nets for me to make use of, I had to repel his boarding attempt on my lonesome, though it was comforting to know that once I took him out, I had a bit of time to reset. After which, I decided to return the favor, I knocked his mast down in turn, deciding to press the advantage with a board of my own. Though unfortunately, my ship did take some damage in the process. At first I was a bit confused over why he jumped into the water once I boarded, but his motives became clear to me after he juked me a couple times. Since I opted to immobilize his ship rather than damaging the hull, there was no good way for me to sink his vessel, all the while mine was taking on water. When I failed to take him out, I decided to retreat. There was no victory to be had if my ship sinks, and I was not gonna let this dude just have his way. That ended up being the right choice because I had not put my vessel into enough of a spin, meaning it was on its way to head out of bounds. Clearly, I was not good enough to end this fight swiftly. Instead, I decided to play the long game. I just spent the last hour filling supplies into my ship, so I opted for a long-range battle in an attempt to make him run out. And once I saw him shooting firebombs at me instead of cannonballs, I knew the time was right. He must have been running low, giving me the perfect opportunity to go and finish this fight once and for all. Alright, here we go. Let's get this guy out of bounds. There's one hole, here's bananas. Gonna take his last wood. Alright, he's off. Perfect. That's exactly what I wanted. Please don't sink, ship. Please don't sink. GG's, man. It was a fun fight. I finally got the upper hand. His ship was already sinking while heading out of bounds all the while he ran out of supplies. If I can secure the spawn camp just one more time, victory would certainly be mine. Though as you guys know, it's in moments of impending victory that COT often responds with disaster. Please just sink already. Oh, I didn't shoot. No, 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 I, why didn't it shoot? Why did my blunderbuss not shoot? I was beyond frustrated. My blunderbuss jamming at the absolutely worst time had cost me certain victory, but there was no time to submit to desperation. The fight will continue until one of us sinks, and I was determined to be the last one standing. Oh, shit. Gotta save your ship, man. Got a bucket. Got a bucket. Come on, man. Where's the bucket? <laughs> Can't have your weapons out and bucket at the same time. Let's go. We won. Let's go. <laughs> We're gaming. I did it. I came out victorious in my first battle. And let me tell you, this was not going to be the last one. This first win increased my hourglass value to 10,000 gold pieces and leveled up my emissary flag to rank 3. Cashing out now gave me a whopping 16,700 gold for a single fight. But there was one problem. That battle took way too much effort for me to win. And I'm sure a lot of you guys think the same. Before queuing up for my next match, I tried to come up with a strategy that would allow me to win faster so I can make money more quickly. And as I descended for a another go around, I got a brilliant idea. Why bother sailing around in circles to try and sink my opponent when instead I can use the one thing I'm good at? Talking. It was time to put that silver tongue to use, so let's find out if I can strike a deal that my opponent would find worth taking. I request a parlay. I have the following offer for you. We can either circle around each other for the next hour, or we have a duel, mano a mano. The loser has to give up his supplies and scuttle the ship. A fairly reasonable offer, if I do say so myself, and unsurprisingly, he accepted it. We laid out a few ground rules as far as the fight was concerned, with him opting to do it on his vessel. And once all the details were ironed out, it was time to fight. Alright, three, two, one, go! He might be double gunning, chat. Should not have followed him. Oh, what? Hey, GG's. Victory's ours! He now has to scuttle. Legally. Now that's what I call a certified Sea of Thieves moment. The killing blow was one that I didn't even get a hit marker on, but hey, we take wins so we can get them. And a win this was, because our friend over there honored the contract he signed and sailed his ship out of bounds to grant me my victory. His hourglass exploded, my emissary flag leveled up to rank 5, and my hourglass value increased yet again. Now if this had been the end of my adventure, it would have already made for a great tale to tell at the tavern. But remember how I was looking for like-minded servants of the flame at the start of my session? Well, there was 
was a rank 5 reaper galleon that came my way to congratulate me on my victory, meaning there were yet more battles to be had and more glory to be claimed. Hello fellow reapers! Hello, yeah, hello. fellow friend! Hey, you I'm look good! You. Look at hey. you! Oh yeah! <laughs> <laughs> nice. Are you guys waiting for PvP as well? Yep. Yeah. yeah, boy! This was everything I'd hoped for and then some. Like-minded pirates fighting alongside each other against a common enemy. Since both of us were queued up for PvP, we decided to align up so that we can help each other when we get invaded. Though it wasn't either of us that needed help. One of these guys had kept an eye on the map and spotted a champion Athena vessel currently engaged in combat with a fellow Reaper. We couldn't just stand by idly, so we headed out as fast as possible to make sure that the Servants of the Flame reigned supreme. Though as much as we could locate the enemy vessel very quickly, they had sunk the other reaper even faster than the time it took us to make our way over there. If it wasn't protection, it shall be vengeance. We had no intention to let that champion get away with this, though if one thing wasn't obvious yet, it's that timing wasn't our strong suit. Oh, that's another ship. Wait. Wait. Wait, what? It had finally dawned on me that my galleon friends had been invaded! The slow pace of my vessel was my detriment yet again, because a massive, continuous barrage of cannon fire began raining hell on both sides of this fight before I could even get in range. I immediately started laying into that galleon as soon as I could hit them, taking out several of their mass in the process. But it was all for naught. This was a one broadside kind of proposition and, well, my friends had sunk in the blink of an eye. The rules of matchmade PvP dictate that the losing side gets merged onto a different server meaning my alliance was no longer. I mean, okay, we all know the meme of the running reaper, but you know how they say, it's time to live so we can fight another day. Though let's just say that Rare was watching and they did not intend to let me get away. Oh, you're trolling. You absolutely, you've gotta be kidding me. Yep, my cowardice was met with immediate retribution in form of a kraken spawn. You can imagine what kinds of profanity followed this encounter as I desperately tried to get this stupid thing off of me. But here's what's funny. That galleon was not chasing me because Queuing up for PvP increases the value of your hourglass, doing that was actually more profitable for them than chasing me, well knowing I was not gonna stick around for a 1v4. Ultimately, I did end up getting away by queuing up for a fight of my own, but my pride was undeniably damaged. Of course I was more confident in winning a sloop 1v1 than fighting a galleon on my own, but still, I lost too many allies today to feel okay about tucking tail, a reality that I could not escape by fighting this guardian of fortune no matter how much I decided to sweat. This victory rang hollow knowing I couldn't celebrate it with any of my allies. However, I was meant to be given a shot at redemption. Two vessels had emerged on the same battlefield I just left, and I knew that this was the universe giving me a chance to make things right. Northwest, what is the, the ship size? I wanna know. Two sloops again? Okay, screw it. Now we're gonna go help. We're gonna go help. Sloops take a really long time to sink. Hopefully this guy can survive. There was no time for hesitation. I was the only other servant of the flame in sight, and I refused to watch as another one of my brethren fell in battle. I rained my chain shots down with reckless abandon. Conserving supplies was the least of my concerns now if it meant that we could sink this vessel. This was a duo sloop battle, while one of the reapers held down the spawns together with me, his crew may begin laying into the stationary vessel with more and more water filling the hole. And I think you know how this story ended. Victory was ours, fair play be damned, and hilariously enough, this even contributed towards my streak despite not being my fight. And well, a cheeky little 3 streak with a rank 5 emissary flag was enough to pocket another 90,000 gold pieces for the day. Definitely nowhere near as impressive as Mixel's 22 streak for over a million gold, but hey, not too shabby for somebody who's not very good at PvP. If it's more PvP content you are looking for, make sure you check out my last episode in which I was trying to fight chips bigger than my own as a solo. You can find the card on screen right now. But until then, thank you everybody so much for watching, I hope you guys have a day filled with the riches on the sea, and until next time, peace!